I'm falling, but I cannot budge. Been wondering why I'm in love with a strange addiction. And why the fuck you always playing a victim? A lot of this shit that you hate to mention. It sucks that I had to taint your vision. Today we'll be reacting to Joyner Lucas and Jenna Lee Roll's song, Best For Me. This song speaks to the heart of addiction and the back and forth between what a loved one experiences and the pain of watching someone in the cycle of addiction and also what the person, the addict, is experiencing in their pain and their attempts to continue numbing, to continue numbing and covering it up. It can be such a vicious and painful cycle. I honestly have compassion, so much compassion for either person in those roles. I think that it can be really difficult at times to understand, so for people to understand having compassion for an addict who's causing pain for their family and for their loved ones. When that pain looks so apparent, the damage that's caused is so apparent, I guess, that's my goal, though, is to try and, and seek to have compassion for people who it's even difficult, or maybe more so for them, because they need it too. And this video highlights all of that in such a poetic way. It's always a fun treat to hear Jelly Roll's like angelic voice coming out of this like big, burly, tattooed man. And this is my first introduction to Joyner Lucas. So that's really fun. I hope to continue reacting to more of his works and exploring what he has to offer to the world. But thank you so much for joining us. And it would mean the world if you could like, subscribe, and share all of what we've got with a friend who might also be interested. Our goal here at Delightfully Dysfunctional is creating an authentic, curious, and open culture it's all about the power of vulnerability. My co-host James and I also have a podcast, the Delightfully Dysfunctional Podcast, to be specific. And I feel like you'll find some tidbits there that will help you in your healing. So please check it out. Specifically, some that reminded me um, of powerful messages in this song were our podcast episode on childhood or adverse childhood experiences, childhood trauma and abuse and how that can show up for people in oftentimes physical ailments, but also addiction. We also have some related to codependency, and that's a cycle here that is also featured in the song. But I'll stop jib-jabbing and let you react and react to my reaction and enjoy. How can you love someone and learn to let them go? How can we fall apart on things we'll never know? Isn't it funny you can change your ways For someone to fill in your empty space Tell me is it really love If you have to ask if they'll stay Yeah, I got somebody I love yeah. Someone who's really important to me But now they addicted to drugs Someone who not Okay, like this is This is how we're starting out Dang I mean, okay, like I guess my only commentary is like Whoa, okay, we're we're getting deep, but um, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. This is my introduction to Joyner Lucas. Um, and the, I guess the other thought that I had is just, I, I think I just had forgot how beautiful Jelly Roll's voice is. And you just don't expect it from this big dude with tattoos on his face. I think that these are just really beautiful reminders to... Like, every person has beauty within them, every single person, and um, to not make judgments. And so I think that the world would be a much beautiful place if we could step into that. And I mean, and that's also difficult because we're human and we're flawed. So it's an unrealistic aspiration, but at the same time, it's so beautiful to have the reminder when, as I watch this and as I hear Jelly Roll's just like angelic voice come out of his mouth. Um, but okay. Back to the realness, cause things got real, real fast. And we ain't been keeping in touch. I ain't gonna say any names at all, cause I don't want no one to judge. But I wrote the song, I hope when they hear it, they'll never forget who they was. I hope you're feeling your spirit enough. I wanna just tell you I love you in case that you really don't hear it as much. I know we ain't talked in a while, but fuck it, I really don't care what it was. I wanna reach out, but you keep on shutting me down. Or you ain't been caring as much. What the fuck happened to you? 
You losing a fight I never thought I'd see the day that you let addiction ruin your life Everyone calling that shit a disease and making you feel like you in the right But I hate the fact that you really be using that as an excuse to do what you like or do what you might And I keep on praying and reaching for you I hope you look in the mirror see all the things I've been seeing in you Hope your reflection will send you a message and show you Oh, I hope you look in the mirror and see all the things I'd be seeing in you Yeah, uh, this is making me think of This is making me think of our friend Andy and, and he took his life It was not through pills But um, addiction was a part of his life And it's so hard to love someone and see their light that they don't see within themselves Addiction is so much about numbing pain oftentimes childhood trauma and childhood pain and not finding a place to really freely and authentically release that. We have to feel through our emotions to get to the other side. And especially as children, that's a difficult task if we don't feel like we have any loving or caring adults around us. Now, like I'm, I'm putting a lot of projections onto this song because it hasn't said any of that, but the, this is my take as someone who... Like I've, I've worked with a lot of trauma as a therapist and addiction. And so these are just common themes and, and strings that tie the two together, to be quite honest. Unhealed trauma creates pain that feels difficult to heal and so easy to numb. Reflection to send you a message and show you this shit is much deeper than you If you don't believe in yourself, then you'll never believe in somebody believing in you And I gotta tell you the truth Cause I'm about to lose it And you in denial about it and just wanna make up a million excuses Tearing our family apart, but you leave a scar and everyone bruises Every decision affecting us all And if you get lost, then everyone loses For real And I'ma be next to leave I know that guy got a plan and you ain't fulfilling your destiny Much as I need you, I will there's a line here I want to come back to, and also it's really interesting. I just noticed, like, his shirt and what it said, too. It said, growth with a yin-yang, and, like, I, I mean, that's just a really powerful spiritual symbol, and then, like, someone can be really trying on that path and still be fumbling, still be fumbling, 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 and that can cause so much pain for people. Um, I hope you look in the mirror and see all the things they be seen in you. Hope your reflections send you a message and show you this shit is much deeper than you. If you don't believe in yourself, then you'll believe in somebody. You'll never believe in somebody believing in you. Yeah. Like, people won't see or hear the things that they are not, they're putting up blocks to see or hear. And that even happens if I, they get so far as to sit on my couch in my office um, or on my telehealth screen and that's what's difficult is like being able to grow and plant these seeds that can sometimes take some a bit of time before one's ears and mind and spirit are ready to really hear them. And the numbing, numbing, numbing of addiction quiets the pain, but also can quiet very much your ability to hear that message of who you really are. When I be sticking around or watching you rest in peace I promise I love you, but I gotta do what's best for me How can you love someone and learn to let them go? How can we fall apart on things we'll never know? Isn't it funny you can change your ways For someone to fill in your empty space? Tell me, is it really love if you have to ask if they'll Stay. Look, I know you've been calling for me You hitting my phone, but I've been alone so long I'm harder to reach I know you ain't saying any names, but I got a feeling you talking to me I hate when these demons get into my soul I feel like I'm caught in the beast How do I let go of something I know is bigger and stronger than me If I could be honest, I'll tell you the truth I'm not who you want me to be Nobody is perfect, not even you So why you keep targeting me? I feel like we can't even have a genuine convo Without you starting to preach I feel like a dog on a leash, it's not what I need Living in hell, wondering when I gotta leave, like how can I breathe? How you gonna tell me addiction's not a disease? What do you mean? 
If it's not a disease, then why has it gotten to me? It's not what it seems. But you always be making me feel like the problem is me. I'm not gonna be who you want me to be. Like God decided for me. And speaking to God, how the fuck you know all of the plans he's got for me? So give me a break. I've been itching away from trying to get out of this dream. I'm drifting away. How come you only there for me when I be trying to get clean? My biggest mistake is me wishing that things were different. I felt like the drugs is made for sinning. That's why I've been stuck in the same position. Fuck. I'm falling, but I cannot budge. Been wondering why I'm in love with a strange addiction. And why the fuck you always playing a victim? A lot of this shit that you hate to mention. It sucks that I had a taint your vision. But ain't nothing left for me, so you can just quit addressing me. I guess it's just my destiny. So take me as I am, or let me be. Tired of you stressing me, cause shit I gotta do is best for me. How can you love someone? <sighs> this song is speaking to addiction so well. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it's speaking to codependency a bit too, and like the difficulty of loving and caring for someone that is stuck in the cycle of addiction, and the pain of being stuck in the cycle of addiction and feeling as though you are letting your loved ones down. Ah, uh, it's like the, I, yeah, it's. I hope they use this in treatment centers. I hope that I hope this is being used and being talked about and is in healing circles and and Al-Anon and AA and NA and all the things. Because I think there's so much or so many powerful truths in this. So many powerful truths. It is so hard to love someone in addiction. It really is. Yeah. I've been there. It's so hard. Because that love, mm, that love doesn't mean that they change. And they're so stuck in their own pain that even knowing that they've hurt you creates more pain for them. And that's complicated. I'm not saying that there's an easy solution out of it. And when we think that there is an easy solution... It's really because you only have your lived experience here as a human. That's all that you have within you. So how can you understand someone else's lived experience? Or all the things that they haven't shared with you that are just locked deep within them. It can become such a vicious cycle. But also as someone who loves people with addiction, your ultimate truth is to have to navigate and have boundaries that do protect you. And that person in addiction, I think they have to come to a place of really realizing that they can't do it on their own and they need some structure to help pull themselves out. And there are places for that. And there are support systems for that. I've said it before in other reaction videos that I've done and in the podcast, but it's so difficult to have a vision of a different iteration of yourself, to have an idea of who that next chapter person is. If all your previous chapters have been so written and marred with pain, it feels hopeless and scary. It feels scary to have hope. It feels scary and nerve-wracking to have the idea of being happy and it's so unknown and so that numbing cycle kicks in so automatically this song dials that in woof they included a phone number for help and we will include the same number if there's anyone who's watching uh, this and is in that position 
because you can't do it alone and asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It is a beautiful sign of strength. We were never meant to do it all alone, especially something that can feel like a Herculean task or climbing Mount Everest. Like you need some help and that's okay. Hmm. I want to look back at the lyrics real quickly. Um, Actually, that last scene when he's dumping the pills down in the sink. And like my assumption is that they're opiates. And the interesting thing is that they do cause a numbing of your nervous system, as is designed. It also can create more nerve receptors. Because your brain and your body are connected. And this is why it is so difficult to get off of them. Because you experience such physical pain. And physical pain is very much a manifestation of unprocessed emotional pain. Our brain and our body are connected. We are one organism. It is not separate. And Western medicine has gotten a lot of that wrong. I urge you to lean into learning more about that through, I would say, like Gabor Mate and Bessel van der Kolk are some of the teachers that I've found in understanding that brain-body connection. But there are many. And they have short lectures. Now they've got reels. Like there's ways to sprinkle it in. But lean in and seek it out. Try to understand that connection so that you can work on healing yourself. This was a powerful song about addiction. Um, And addiction comes in many forms. Not just opioid addiction, right? Not just substance abuse. Gambling sex addiction, shopping addiction, scrolling addiction. That's meant to be addictive too. In whatever ways you might need to have a different understanding of how to let yourself process and feel and not numb, start asking yourself, what is it that is starting to trigger me before I feel the urge to pour a glass of alcohol or to take that pill or fill in the blank. What is it that I'm sitting with? I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable. But we have to start with just, it doesn't have to be bad. We don't have to start shaming ourselves, just like sitting with it and trying to identify the feeling or even where you feel it in your body. That might be a starting point. Is there tension anywhere? Is there tightness somewhere? Is there a tingling? And find it, find a practitioner that can help you. I'll be restructuring some things in my business, and I do have a wait list, but if you are interested in life coaching with me, then I'm able to work with people anywhere in the world. You can find that information in the link in the description of our Delightfully Dysfunctional YouTube page. And I just am sending you so much care in whatever you are navigating today, right now, in this moment. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you in the next reaction video or on the podcast with me and James.